Ladies and gentlemen, we've done some things as of late. We've proven triangles congruent. We've then gone a step further and used the fact that their corresponding parts of those congruent triangles would indeed be congruent as well. And now we're going to go beyond that while still using congruent triangles and using corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We're just going even further. We're taking it to the limit. There is no limit to where we can take it, actually. America. Well, we got a few things we're going to add to our honors geometry toolbox, if you will. First off is an auxiliary line, a line that's drawn into a diagram to help solve a problem, right? So say I wanted, I had this kind of a triangle here, right? Say I didn't have, let's say I've got this, let's make that a C. Um, let's say I wanted to split this into two triangles for whatever reason, boom, draw a line. My statement would be draw AD. My reason would be two points determine a line. Two points determine a line. Cool? Sorry, I had to do some abbreviations there. I was running out of room. But draw AD, two points determine a line. Cool. Awesome. America. Side note, this is another frequently misused definition. Whenever uh, people are a little clueless on proofs, you start draw, drawing lines in all over the place. I'm going to give you some tips here to using auxiliary lines. Make sure you're not misusing these auxiliary lines. So we got our first proof here. It looks like we got a little uh, issue up in this area. That is circle. Oh, all right. And we've got that GJ and H J are congruent to each other, and I want to prove those two angles are congruent. Well, let's think about how we might be able to do that. Well, in order to prove these angles congruent, maybe I could get a couple triangles congruent, right? That's, that's one way that I've done that when we use CPCTC. That's something I'm thinking about. However, I only see one triangle. <gasps> could this be a time that we can use an auxiliary line? My goodness, I've just drawn in J-O. I've got two triangles now. Make sure whenever you draw in an auxiliary line, this is something you might want to jot down, make sure you know something about that auxiliary line. All right, don't just start drawing lines for whatever reason. In this case, I know that J-O is a side of both of these triangles. It's congruent to itself by reflexive property. Heck, yes, I know something about this. Or maybe it's a, that it's a radius, right, and they can pair up with some other radii, or i got to draw in a couple radii. I know they're congruent, okay? So make sure you know something about it, and we'll, take, we'll get some practice here and there uh, with auxiliary lines, and I'll try to point those things out. Okay. Now, do I have enough to prove these two triangles congruent? I need one more thing. Ladies and gentlemen, we just had Larcy Lars, Ms. Larson, <laughs> jump into the building. Woo How you doing over there? <laughs> woo woo! What you got there? Some, some cottage cheese? It is lunchtime. It's time for some cottage cheese. Is that cheese that was made in a cottage? Is that where it gets its name, its name from? Strung through cheesecloth. It's very fancy. All right. Cottage style cheeses. Thank you for hey. putting me in your video. You have a wonderful day. Yeah. See you later. See ya. All right, that was exciting. Well, where were we? We were about to say that these bad boys are radii, G-O and H-O, are congruent to each other. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> Hot diggity dang! Looks like I got some side-side-side action right here with the triangles. A little side hustle, if you will. Let's write it up. I got my triangles congruent. I know, once I get those congruent, pew, CPCTC! Gonna get that. Very good. Let's see here. Given. Then I've got to draw. Don't forget to write this in. Draw J O. Two points determine a line. Step three. J O is congruent to itself. I'm going to put that right after because. Otherwise, I'll forget. Plus, it's just, you know, nice nice form, nice little flow to this, right? You want to make sure that things flow from one to the next. Like, you have purpose. Okay, reflexive property. Um, I'm given that J, G, and H, J are congruent. The last one was G, O is congruent to H, O. It's all... Radii 
not there we go radii congruent come on mr I'm almost spelling radii can uh, incorrectly my goodness <clears throat> all right triangles are congruent got to make sure that you write your triangle statement correctly let's go with j o g is congruent to well j o g then it'd be j o h very important that you have those set up correctly all right cool j o is congruent to j o o h and o g are congruent and then we've got j g and j h are congruent to each other everything checks out i like it and that was by side 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 and lastly but not leastly angle g is congruent to Angle H, and that is by CPCTC. C. Woo! Yeah, yeah. That was like a buzzer beater right there. Michael Jordan style. Greater than LeBron James. Okay. Now, what if I told you that you'd be able to do this step in, do this proof in two steps? You will learn about that in the future. That's something to look forward to. I'm not going to tell you when you're going to learn about that. But at some point, you're going to be able to say, hey, you know what, Mr. Allen? If these sides are congruent, this bad boy right here, that, that isosceles triangle, if these sides are congruent, then these angles have to be congruent. That'll be a new theorem we learn at some point, but you don't have it yet. So a little, little preview. Hmm. All righty. Altitude. An altitude is just uh, a line segment drawn from any vertex of the triangle perpendicular to the opposite side. Boom. There's an altitude. Cool. And it can be drawn from C and being perpendicular to the opposite side. It can be drawn from A and perpendicular to the opposite side. I. Now, down here, can it lie outside of a triangle? Hmm, that's an interesting thought. Just has to be perpendicular to the opposite side, right? And that is important. I would jot that down. It is perpendicular to the opposite side. A lot of people make mistakes when they're using altitude in their proofs. They say things like, oh, it's 90 degrees or whatever. It's perpendicular. That's what we got. So there's a few steps often associated with altitude. Back to the question, can it lie outside? Let's say I've got this triangle here that stopped drawing. Okay. Let's say this guy is X, Y, Z. Well, if I'm going from Z to the opposite side, boom, it's right there. But if I want to draw one that's perpendicular to the opposite side from, say, X, I would actually have to extend. That's, that is absolutely terrible. I'd have to extend this side. That's a little better. And then my altitude would come down and perpendicular to that. So it would indeed lie outside the triangle. So the answer is yes here. It can. Okay, it's not often, but it can. It absolutely can. One more definition here, folks, that we're going to use them. A median. A median is a segment drawn from a vertex, then to the midpoint of the opposite side, right? So if it's drawn to the midpoint, that would mean that D here is a midpoint. Then I could say that AD is congruent to DC by definition a midpoint. Again, a few steps often associated with median, much like there's usually a couple of few steps associated with altitude. Now, can a median can a median lie outside the triangle? Well, if it's drawn to the midpoint of the opposite side, yeah, that was also terrible. It kind of went all over the place. Boom, that's a little better. Or say I've got it here from C to that guy. No, it will not lie outside of our triangle. Okay? Now, if I drew these correctly, what will actually happen, okay, if I drew these correctly, these will all intersect at the same spot. If you draw all three median correctly, they will all intersect at the very same spot. Called the centroid if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, that's a fun word. It's like a robot. Centroid. Okay. Alrighty. Our first proof with not only one, but both of the new awesome, super cool altitude and median. Awesome. I'm so psyched. This is, this is just wonderful is what we got going on here. Okay. Now, 
this type of problem, where I give you an altitude and you prove a median, or maybe vice versa, given, out, given a median, prove an altitude, comes up all the time. It is so frequent. It is incredibly frequent. Okay? So I would make sure that you you jot this one down, maybe a star next next to it, maybe a, maybe a little circle and a highlighter and some, uh, some glitter glued down to your paper to say, hey, this one might be important and anything else that I see like it. Okay? Hopefully I laid that on thick enough there for you to, uh, to start this one as important and to refer back to it frequently. Okay. So we have CFD and EFD are congruent. Lovely. I have that FD is an altitude. Well, what does an altitude tell me? An altitude tells me that they are perpendicular. What does perpendicular tell me? That tells me that I have right angles. I see a lot of people notate that like that, right? Okay. So I know that I'm going to get a pair of right angles here, yep. And what I do with those, maybe I'll prove them congruent, maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll see what we have, okay? So we're in the realm of proving triangles congruent. So I have a feeling we're going to prove those two triangles congruent, right? That's a, that's a decent assumption there. Um, well, how could we prove those triangles congruent? Well, if I'm looking at this, I see I have a couple pairs of angles, right? I could prove these right angles congruent, yeah? I could do that. I'm going to jot that down. Boom. And then it looks like I've got some reflexive property going on. So I can get these triangles to be congruent. Awesome. Angle side angle, go and do that. Right? Maybe I'll jot that down here because this is a long proof. I got a lot of thinking to do here. I got a lot of organization. But I've got to my congruent triangle. That's like my halfway point at this point now. All right, that's like my checkpoint. Now I want to take a look at my proof here, and it says that FD is a median. Well, what does it mean to be a median? Right? What, how do I get that? Well, a median gives me a midpoint. Oops, the heck? Here we go. A median gives me a midpoint. And how do I get a midpoint? I would need two congruent segments, right? Congruent segs, segments. Okay. Well, how can I get two congruent segments? Oh. Couldn't I get that from CPCTC? And how can I use CPCTC? Get my triangle congruent. Oh my goodness, hold up. I think I got this whole thing planned out. Are we ready? I get to my triangles to be congruent. Angle side, that was a terrible arrow. I'm gonna try that again. Boom, way better, sharp. Once I've got my triangles congruent, I can use CPCTC to prove these segments congruent. And once I've got these segments congruent, I can say I've got a midpoint. And once I have a midpoint, holy guacamole, I can say that I have a median. I think I'm ready to write this thing down. I'm ready to jot this bad boy down. Write it up. Woo! Let's do that. I'm going to need some room, apparently. I'm going to need some room. Okay, let's do this. So I've got statement one is my given. Statement two. Let's see here. I said, um, let's not forget some things. How about, let's just throw in reflexive property right away. DF is congruent to DF. Let's get that out of the way so we don't forget. Okay, now I'm into the altitude section. Okay, so I know that FD, see, altitude gives me perpendicular. FD is perpendicular to CE. Someone's printing stuff, killing trees. I don't know if you can hear the printer. Probably can. All right, and that is definition altitude. From perpendicular, I'm going to get me some right angles. So that's angle CDF and angle EDF are right angles. Awesome. And that would be by definition perpendicular. From right angles, 
since I'm using angle side angle and not like hypotenuse leg right angle, I can't do hypotenuse leg right angle. Um, I've got to do angle side angle here because of what I've got to prove the triangle is congruent. I do need to say these guys are congruent to each other. C, D, F is congruent to E, D, F. And that would be all right angles congruent. Woo! I've got the other two angles congruent, so I have enough to prove my triangles congruent now, right? Of course, as always, we got to be careful. C, D, F, I start with one of them, and then I match up the other. So C, D, F, that's going to match up with E, D, F. All right. When I check that with the parts that I'm proving congruent, like I know the angle that's associated with vertex D, those go together. Uh, the, the angles associated with vertex F, those go together. Cool. C and E would end up going together as well. So that is angle, oops, angle, side, angle. Keep her moving. So I've got my triangles congruent, and then I remember that I wanted to use CPCTC, right? That's where I'm at now on my little flow charty type dealio thing here. So I've got uh, CD is congruent to DE. And why am I saying those two segments are congruent? I'm saying that because if I've got congruent segments, I can get a midpoint. And if I get a midpoint, I can get a median. And that is CPCTC. Alrighty. Eight. Oh, man, I'm running out of room. Got to bring it up a little more. So number eight, I'm going to have that D is a midpoint of, what was it, CE? That's definition midpoint. And last but not least, FD is a median. My reason, definition, median. And if you need to, feel free to write out the definitions when you prove this. If that helps you to remember what's going on, you can do that. So let me recap this back half here. Once I've got my segments congruent by CPCTC, I can say that D is a midpoint because the definition of midpoint says that I get two congruent segments, or vice versa, right? I can flip that because it's a definition. And once I've got that D as a midpoint, I know that it's a median because the definition of median states that you get a midpoint. And since it's a definition, it's reversible. Boom. I've got myself FD is a median. Woo! That was a lengthy one. My goodness. All right, last proof, and then we have one other graphing type problem. It's been a lengthy video. These are some in-depth problems, so it does take a little bit of time. All right, let's do this proof. So I've got that NR is congruent to PR. I have that RO bisects NRP. Be careful. If RO bisects, that means that these two angles are congruent. I want to prove that OR bisects NOP. Well, bisecting, obviously, we know that it gets you congruent angles. So in order to prove that something's been bisected, you've got to get congruent angles. That means that I want to prove that these two are congruent to each other in order to get the bisecting, right? Well, how am I going to get my two angles congruent? Want. Um, how am I going to get that? Well, how about if I get a couple triangles congruent, I can use C, P, C, T, C. Boom. All right, I think we can uh, maybe get a little bit going here. I've got an angle and a side, a pair of angles and a pair of sides there in red. So I need another angle, so like angle N and angle P. Mm, don't have anything on that, or maybe another side. I think I see a little reflexive going on. Oh my goodness, side angle side is going to get these triangles congruent, right? And if I've got the triangles congruent, I can prove those blue angles congruent. And I've got those, I can prove the bisecting. I think we are ready to rock. I need to give myself a little more room on this side. Lovely. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to go with red. So first thing we said was angle, and I'm just going to mark it as 1 and 2. Okay, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And that would be by definition bisect. 
and then, oh, I could even put three and four. That's not too bad. I'm just using the finger here. I don't even have the stylus right now. Heck yeah. So I'm going to use those later, right? Well, I'm just going to jot them down for now. So I've got NR and PR congruent. Oh, that's right. OR is congruent to itself. By reflexive property. Yes. Do I have enough to prove the triangle is congruent? Heck yeah, I do. So triangle. How about NRO? NRO. What would match up with that? Triangle. PRO. And that was SAS. A little SAS. Angle five, or sorry, step five. Um, well, I can get three and four congruent now. C, P, C, T, C. A step I can only use once I've got triangles congruent, right? Heck yes. I've got, let's see here, it looks like O, R, my prove. Bisects. Those are rays. You see the little bit of, looks like they tried to have an arrow. Angle NOP, angle N O, I'm running out of room. P. Definition bisect. Awesome. Alright, that's the other, that's the converse of the definition of bisect, or yeah, I believe that's the converse of it. But I'm not gonna make you, you know, remember which one's the right the original, which one's the converse. Really want to just know that you can apply it in either direction because definitions are reversible. You can do the converse of them and they hold true. Woo! That was fun! So beyond CPCDC, we're going a little bit beyond, and we'll continue to go beyond and add to that. All right, let's do this here. We've got plot those points. I've already done that. Connect the points to create triangle ABC. I've already done that. Now it says find the midpoints of each side and draw its medians. Well, I'm just going to review one of those for you, okay? I'm going to find the midpoint of BC. Sound good? Cool. Awesome. There we go. I'm going to find that midpoint. Well, if we got to remember our midpoint formula, right? It's x plus x over 2, comma y plus y over 2. You could similarly see with like subscripts, right? y2 plus y1. It really doesn't matter the order because you're just adding them together and addition is commutative. But there we go. All right, so I could do 5 plus 6. If I'm doing from b to c over 2, comma, and then 6 plus 0, 6 plus 0 over 2. That gives me 11 over 2, comma, 3. There's my midpoint. And I can sketch that bad boy, and so it's 5 and a half, comma, 3, right there. Whee! And I can do that for all of them. I'm not going to waste time on the video here doing that, but you can uh, go ahead and draw that bad boy in there. You can find the midpoints of each one and draw them in as well. Cool. Awesome. Lovely. Now, one way I could word this, I could say, like, AM is a median. What are the coordinates of M? Well, you'd need to know that this would be point M. It's the midpoint of BC. If AM is a median, it has to be drawn to the midpoint. Or I could say that CM is a median. What, what are the coordinates of M? Well, that would be the midpoint of AB, then. It would be somewhere over in this area, right? That would be my coordinate of M. You'd have to find the midpoint of AB. That would be a, a more fun way of wording that type of question. Woo! Woo! Freedom.